Greetings, my cherished brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I am eager to share with you all a commentary on Father Michael Rodriguez's prophecy concerning the two popes, Pope Francis and Pope Emeritus Benedict. Before we delve into the messages, I encourage everyone to take a moment to share this video with others, as these messages are an urgent communication from the Most Holy Trinity to humanity. We hope that these words will spread across the globe. Before we explore these messages, let us begin with a short prayer, asking God for guidance and to glorify us in the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I present them for all the intentions of your sacred heart, the salvation of souls, reparation for sin, and the reunion of all Christians. I also offer them for the intentions of our bishops and all the apostles of prayer, especially for those recommended by our Holy Father this month. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the gift of the same Spirit, we may be always truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 6, it says, The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. God delivered Father Michael Rodriguez a prophetic message, which he gave us on January 3, 2019, in which he talks about what would happen to the church specifically to Pope Francis and Pope Emeritus Benedict. According to Father Michael, for a long time, people have entered the church with the sole purpose of changing sound doctrine. An ecumenical mass will be launched in the church first by various religious leaders, then by a committee of bishops, and as the last step, this mass model will be proposed to the Holy Father, Pope Francis. In Rome, on October 1, 2017, a document of Pope Francis named Magnum Principium went into force, granting permission to national conferences and bishops to insert new phrases, prayers, or adjustments in the rite of Holy Mass, including the consecration for their nations. Many nations are today mired in sins and marital troubles as a result of numerous divorces and separations, and they have strayed, according to Father Michael, off the Lord's path with numerous deviations on this issue. Each bishop preaches church doctrine in his or her unique way, which is perilous. If synods in countries have the right to modify the liturgy of the Mass, you can be sure they will submit a terrible proposal to the Holy Father. If Pope Francis does not sign their plans, which would entail rejecting what the Holy Father has already given them the power to do, it will cause a rift in the church which we shall witness very soon. He continues, Rome will only sign the document if they believe the bishops have been granted the authority to implement changes in their own countries. This does not imply that the Pope signed the final text, but he will be present to try to amend it. And we can only tell if we listen during Mass that the words during the consecration will be different. People are not required to attend such bogus Masses because it is preferable to consume a soda cookie than to attend those false masses where the bread will not be sanctified. 
This is the first indication of the impending calamity the church will go through, the same events as Jesus, including the Passion, Death and Resurrection. The Antichrist is already in the church's hierarchy. Father Michael states clearly that the Antichrist is not Pope Francis. According to Father Michael, the Antichrist has always desired to sit on the throne of Peter. Pope Francis will be like Peter the Apostle. He will realize his faults. He will strive to reunite the church under the authority of Christ, but he will no longer be able to do so. Pope Francis will die a martyr's death. Then Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who still wears his papal ring, will come. He will attempt to convene a council to rescue the church. I saw him frail and vulnerable, being held on both sides by two Swiss guards. I observed him fleeing Rome as a result of the widespread destruction. He's hiding, but he will be found, and I saw his martyrdom. Pope Francis accomplishes many wonderful things, yet he trusts, depends on, and grants liberties to dangerous bishops. He recognizes that it will bring correction, but it will be too late. God sends his prophets to communicate to his people what is going to happen, his designs and his purposes, but only through prayer and fasting can you change part of this prophecy, such as the story of Nineveh, where God sent Jonah to warn the people that he would destroy them, but through their prayer, God had compassion and forgave Nineveh. The essence of the Holy Mass will never vanish, nor will the Church, for the forces of Satan will never win against it. We will always find faithful priests and bishops who will serve the genuine doctrine. As in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 through 15, the Bible says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Brothers and sisters, let's pray continuously for Father Michael, Pope Francis, Pope Emeritus Benedict, as well as all the priests, bishops and preachers, that our Lord Jesus will pour down his blessings upon them and give them the grace to do everything for the good of his church. Most importantly, to make the greatest decisions for people under their guidance and supervision, and that we, the faithful, will always follow the real magisterium of the church and seek to come closer to God day by day. We will do all necessary to help all of our loved ones, most significantly, regardless of whether the words are actually profitable. All clerics in the religious order, spiritually and in prayer, it is always a good idea to be prepared for the apocalypse and our spiritual connection and well-being with God since we never know when we may die. We should always preserve all ill in our lamps. Lord, help us to discern these times. Father in heaven, may your spirit guide my every decision today. Lead me with your wisdom and allow me to see things as they are so that I do not fall victim to people's deception. Keep me safe from harm from wicked people who try to cheat me. Spare me from the con artists who do not care who they defraud and how much damage they cause. Give me the discernment to recognize and avoid their schemes and their evil intentions. Amen.